Hello everyone, I welcome you all in the fourth lecture on topic simple and compound interest. If you have watched the last lecture, there I had discussed one important concept that is effective rate of interest. So today I am going to show you the application of the same by discussing variety of questions. I hope the agenda is clear, let us start. So as I said in the start of the lecture that today we will focus on solving different types of problem. So let us first start off with type 1. Read the question once. The difference between the compound and simple interest on a certain sum at 10% per annum for 2 years is rupees 631. So if I ask you what this rupees 631 is, you would say sir 631 is actually the difference between compound and simple interest. On a certain sum means on a certain principle. At what rate? At 10% per annum. And for how many years the difference uh, has been calculated? For 2 years. This is the data which I am given with and in this question we have to calculate the value of sum. It means we have to find the principal. Now there can be different ways using which I can answer this question. Uh, one way which I want you to use specifically is something which I had shared with you in the last lecture. The concept, concept of effective rate of interest. So let us try finding out the answer of this question using the concept of effective rate of interest. What is the first step? The first step is to calculate effective rate of interest for the two cases. First for the case of simple interest. What is the value of rate? You would say sir, rate is 10% per annum. Time period is 2 years and remember I told you in case of SI if you want to calculate it directly you will just multiply R and T and you will come up with the value of effective rate of interest. So what will be the overall rate in 2 years? At SI, it would be 20% for 2 years. As simple interest is linear in nature, so to calculate effective rate of interest, I am going to add the two values. It will be simple addition. And that is another reason why effective rate of interest would be only 20%. I hope you can recall. But in case of CI, the change would be, although rate is same, rate is 10% per annum. Also time period is same. These two data are same. The only difference would be since CI is an application of successive percentage change. So I'm going to write down these two changes successively one after another two compounding periods and for every compounding period rate of interest is going to be 10%. Now some of you might be thinking but sir in the question it is nowhere mentioned that whether the compounding needs to be done annually half yearly or quarterly when nothing is mentioned. We assume that it is compounded annually. So in case of compounded annually, if you think about it, see it's very easy. If I ask you what will be the rate offered in the two compounding periods, you would say sir since we are doing the calculation of interest at the end of every year, the value of rate would remain same. It would be 10%. How many numbers of compounding period? Since we are doing the calculation at the end of every year, two compounding periods where rate would be 10% for both the cycles. And now for the calculation of effective rate of interest, I need to apply the formula of successive percentage change. Let's apply the formula A plus B plus A into B upon 100. So when you solve this, you will get 21%. So what will be the effective rate of interest in case of CI? You would say sir, effective rate of interest in case of CI is 21%. Now if you compare the two values, the two effective rate of interest in case of SI and CI, you would realize that CI is more rewarding. So what is the difference between CI and SI? You would say the difference is 21% minus 20%. So can I say that the value of difference in terms of percentage is 1%? You would say yes sir. And the same value of 1% according to question, what is the difference value for CI and SI for 2 years? According to question, it is 631. So when I calculate 1% of principal, the value should be 631. So can you calculate the value of principal? You would say, sir, it's very easy. Once you remove the percentage sign, you will get 100 in denominator. And from here, now you can very easily calculate what is the value of principal. This would be 631, 100 means 63,100. So try to find where is uh, such option with say 63,100, uh, option 2. So the correct answer of this question would be option 2. So this is one way of solving this question. But is it the only way? No. Now there is a shortcut which I want to introduce here. So please look at the shortcut first. P into R square upon 100 into 100 is equals to a difference between CI and SI for 
two compounding periods. If I ask you, how many compounding periods are there in the question? You would say, sir, number of compounding periods are two. So this formula is applicable here. What I want to calculate? I want to calculate the value of principal. Do I know the value of rate? You would say, yes, sir. The value of rate is 10. So just write square of 10, 10 into 10 upon 100 into 100. And according to question, what is the value of difference? The value of difference is 631. Simply solve this. So these zeros will get cancelled. And again, you will get the same answer, 63,100. So this could be another way using which you can answer your question based on type 1. So please remember that this formula is only applicable for situation where the number of compounding periods are 2. If the number of compounding periods are not 2, then the formula is not applicable. So the first thing that you should check before applying this formula, whether the number of compounding periods are 2 or not. So that is one thing where you have to be a little careful. So after understanding the solution of this particular question, I want to discuss one more question based on the same type. Please read the question carefully. The difference between simple and compound interest on a certain sum is 16% per annum. Now please read this thing carefully. Compounded half yearly for one year. And the difference is rupees 512. And again, I have to do the same thing. I have to find the value of principal. So let us first try solving this question by using the concept of effective rate of interest. So let us first calculate effective rate of interest in case of SI. Rate is 16% per annum. Time period is only one year. So to find the answer of effective rate of interest in case of SI, it is very easy. We'll just multiply the two variables R and T and we'll come up with effective rate of interest at SI. If you try doing the same thing in case of CI, you would say, sir, in case of CI, the only difference would be I have to find out number of compounding periods. Rate is same. Rate is 16% per annum. In fact, time period is also same. One year only. Now, the change is when you read this thing, compounded half yearly means in this question, the calculation of interest will be done at the end of every six months. So in a time period of one year, how many groups of six months? You would say, sir, there are going to be two groups of six months in a time duration of one year. And for these compounding period, if I ask you to find out rate applicable, you would say, sir, although rate is 16% per annum, but since we are doing calculation at the end of every six months, so rate needs to be halved because 16% per annum means 16% in every 12 months. But if I'm doing calculation in every six months, rate needs to be halved. I hope you can recall from the last lecture. So rate of interest would be 8%. So for these compounding period, the value of rate applicable would be 8%. And now what is the next task? The next task is to find effective rate of interest. Let's apply the successive formula. A plus B plus A into B upon 100. 8 plus 8 is 16. 8 into 8, 64 divided by 100. Now to simplify this, just put decimals after two digits. I'll do the same thing in numerator as well. And then you come to know, okay, effective rate of interest in case of CI would be 16.64%. While in case of SI, it is only 16%. So can you tell me what is the difference between the two? The difference between SI and CI for two years. You would say the difference is 0.64%. So when I calculate 0.64% of what? Of principal, this should be equals to rupees 512 as we are given in the question. Now solve it. You will remove the decimal 100 because after decimal there are two digits. Therefore, I will put two zeros in denominator. And as I remove the percentage sign, I have to again write 100 in the denominator. Now do the uh, simplification. 8864, 8648, 8432, 8188. So from here, if I ask you what is the value of principal, you would say, sir, 800 and again 100. So 80,000. So mark an option which says uh, 80,000. Where can you find 80,000? Okay, option 4 is the correct answer. Now, some of you might be thinking, sir, can I solve the same question by using any different approach? The answer is yes. 
if you use this formula what formula the formula which i have shared with you in the last question p into r square 100 into 100 equals to the difference between ci and si for two compounding periods please understand this two is not two years this is for two compounding periods so just ensure whether the number of compounding periods are two or not since the number of compounding periods are two therefore the formula is applicable here since we want to find out the value of principal so let's keep the value of principal as p only the value of rate it is defined it is 16 percent no we'll use this value this value of rate the number of compounding periods should be two and for each compounding period rate applicable is eight so the value of rate has to be manipulated and what is the difference for the two compounding periods the difference is uh, according to question it is 512 so solve this 81 864 81 88 and again you will come up with the same answer 80000 so this formula is only applicable when you are given with the difference between ci and si for two compounding periods another important point to note down while using the formula is when you are using the value of rate you will not use 16 percent in fact you will use eight percent the manipulated value why because for these compounding periods the rate applicable is eight percent so for two compounding period what is the rate applicable it is eight percent so instead of using 16 i'm going to use the value eight that is another important point that you should note down so if you have understood this i want to discuss one last question based on the same type and then maybe we'll close this session please read this question carefully the difference between the compound and simple interest on a certain sum at 20 percent per annum compounded half yearly for one and a half year is rupees 620 so please read data carefully the difference between compound interest and simple interest is given as rupees 620 for how many years for one and a half year read this particular thing compounded half yearly so the number of compounding periods means the calculation of interest will be done at the end of every six months so let's do the calculation of effective rate in case of si first you know the value of rate rate is 20 percent per annum time period is one and a half years in case of simple interest simply multiply rate and time this would be 30 i guess yeah 30 percent for one and a half year this is the value of effective rate of interest at si at ci let's do the same calculation you would say sir at ci rate is 20 percent per annum but the difference is here compounding yes compounding needs to be done at the end of every six months half yearly time period is one and a half year so before we do the calculation of effective rate of interest let us define number of compounding periods now please tell me one thing since we are doing the calculation of interest at the end of every six months so can you tell me the number of compounding periods in this duration of one and a half year you will say sir in one year if i do calculation of interest after the end of every six months the number of compounding periods are going to be two if in one year the number of compounding periods are two can i say that in half year or in 0.5 years the number of compounding period is going to be one only and when you add the two you get to know the number of compounding period at the end of one and a half year simply add the two values you would say sir number of compounding periods are going to be three so you can divide this as one and half year so in one year how many number of compounding periods you would say sir two compounding periods of six months and in the remaining half year number of compounding period would be one only because half year means six months so how many compounding periods in six months only one uh, let me remove the extra part now the next thing that you should define is what is the value of rate applicable in these compounding periods you would say although rate is 20 percent per annum but 20 percent is applicable if i do the calculation of interest at the end of 12 months but since we are doing the calculation in every six months so rate needs to be halved remember i told you that in case of half yearly calculation you have to just take half do half of rate that would be the rate applicable 
for the compounding periods. Now, once you define rate, calculating effective rate of interest is very easy. You will apply successive twice here. Why twice? Because changes are more than two. So, let us first assume this as A and B. Let us first consider the first two changes. Now, you already know, if I apply successive percentage change formula in these two values, where A and B are 10 only. So, the overall change is going to be 21%. You know that. And now let's com uh, combine this 21% with one last change, 10%. A plus B plus A into B upon 100, right? Zeros will get cancelled. So this would be 31 and 21 by 10 can be written as 2.1. So what will the value of effective rate of interest? It is going to be 33.1%. And now please compare the effective rate of interest in CI and in SI. See the difference. You would say the difference is 3.1%. So when I calculate 3.1% of principal, the value should be equals to 620. Let's do the calculation now. If I remove decimal, I'll get a 10 because after decimal, there's only one digit. If you remove the percentage sign, you'll get 100 in the denominator. 31, 1 and 31 times 20. So what is the value of principal? You would say, sir, it's going to be 20,000. So mark an option which says 20,000. Can you see any such option? No, I guess I have forgot to change the answer options. So please uh, make another option. Let's call it option 6 where the answer would be 20,000. So 20,000 is the answer of this question. Another thing which I want you to note down is if you try answering this question using the formula, the shortcut, remember what shortcut? PR into R upon 100 into 100. So do you think this shortcut is applicable in this scenario? The answer is no. You know why? Because the shortcut is only applicable for those scenarios where the number of compounding periods are 2. I hope you can recall. But here, if you count the number of compounding period, these are 3 compounding periods. So in case of more than 2 compounding periods or anything other than 2, the shortcut is not applicable. And therefore, the only way to solve this question is by the use of effective rate of interest. I hope this thing is also understood. So with this, we have come to the end of this lecture. I hope you were able to understand these three questions based on the same type. Uh, please try to understand how one question is different from another. Then only you know it will be a validation for you. Uh, so when the same question appears in the examination, you will be able to identify, okay, what particular setup is given to you. Uh, in the next lecture, I am going to discuss other types. There are four or five more types which are left to be discussed. So stay tuned. Thank you and have a nice day.